Go. She is not going to be a participant, not a willing participant. <laughs> so. Hello. <laughs> we, um, so we Brr. want to, yeah, it's a little bit chilly out here. We want to introduce Terra to tell us Tuesdays. Terra to tell a Tuesday. So our goal is, is to get on here every Tuesday and, um, talk about something. BS about something. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What are we going to BS about today? Because we have opinions. Everyone's got opinions. Right. I have opinions. However, what you should keep in mind is is that every conversation and argument or whatever I talk about um, wasn't always this way, but everything I go into, even if I'm adamantly arguing a point, I am cognizant at all times that everything I'm saying could be absolutely wrong. I could have bad facts. I could have... Uh, incomplete facts I could have just analyzed it wrong it's happened before it'll happen again and it could happen right now so just put that caveat out there right because right. we're always learning we're always trying to get better and, and, and that's you do that through talking so right mm -hmm. and I also want to point out that Peter is drinking out of a plastic water bottle and I always I wanted always, to show you guys what the wrong him. way to do things is <laughs> It's wrong. It's bad. I'm glad you caught that, Katie. That was a test. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What's today's talk about? Well, we could talk about um, leadership. Leadership. We were talking about it earlier, so I was like, "Well, yeah. let's wait until we talk about this." Yeah. So. Go ahead. It's the thing. What? Oh, it's so lovely that um, people oh. are mowing their lawns today. We thought. Is it, it going to interrupt over. the thing? You think? I don't know, but we can try. Let's just keep talking. All right, and then we can we'll figure it out. See. So, what is your what what is you know ideal leader, right? What does it take? What is an ideal leader, and who makes the best leader? I can say what I can say because I've you know what am I forty two now? I've uh, been in the army, been here and there. I've worked for leaders on this side of the spectrum and leaders on this side of the spectrum. Horrible leader, great leader, and everywhere in between. And so. I identify, I can identify what I believe is, or the characteristics that I saw in, in the best leaders and the worst leaders that I've ever had, how, but how do you define them? Do you define them with characteristics or is it a sliding scale or what? Um, well, I guess... You do a human design thing, right? Well, yeah, I'm, I love human design, but I'm definitely not a expert in it. I just... I'm a study of human She's design. a spurt, not an expert. But. Study of human yeah. design. But I can't speak about that enough to um, to bring that up here. But I, I, just for me, um, a good leader is someone who looks out for their people first. Um, I guess another part of it is uh, a person or a company who... Um, looks out for the planet first as well. So mm -hmm. people and the planet first. That's what I, I see. I've been in leadership positions and I, I what I talk about is what I, I idealize what I, when I describe what I find to be the best leader or leadership. Um, but I am not that. I wish I could be, but I'm not. And there's a cert, for, few certain reasons for that that I think are reasons, but um, one of those is <laughs> Jesus. Holy. You want to go inside? And we're back. <sighs> what was I saying? Uh, I was saying that what I my idea of a leader is very very idealistic, right? Uh, I've come up, I've looked at who I've worked for, I've looked at how effective they were, how much I wanted to work for them, and how much I wanted to not fail them, and I try to pull characteristics out of there. Um, the, I can never, I, I never had the ability to actually implement everything all at once and, and be that leader that I wanted to be, uh, and there's a, a few reasons for that. Um, I think the first one is you gotta kinda have a, a gut check and, and, and realize that a lot of stuff ends up being selfish. So why didn't I want it? Why didn't I do the things I needed to do? Why didn't I hold people accountable? Because it wasn't, it was basically, I was afraid of that feeling of that conflict, right? Because they, these people were now my friends. Oh, right, yeah. And so I allowed that fear 
to basically be justification for not holding him accountable. So it's, it right. was it was selfish. I didn't want to do that. As, as if you're put in a leadership position, that's that's what you're there to do, right? Right. Um, so, but that said, this is what I can't do. <laughs> so, but I'm trying. Um, yeah. I've always found that the reluctant leaders are the best, um, and and that's across the board. I've always, I don't know. It's not a trust thing, but I always question the motives. And they're not always bad, right? Motives aren't always bad to be, I want to be a leader. What is the motives? I'd like to dig down and see what the motives are for that. Are you just power hungry or, or, or do you actually want to help people? Right, right. Right. Because one of the biggest misconceptions, at least from, from my view of what leadership is, is you, you and this goes back to the 80s, you, and you ask them, you, know, you ask the workers, what's your job? Uh, and their job is to, do what the leader says and the leader has built that whole construct right you do what i tell you to do because i'm the manager and then yeah that that's it but i think that that's backwards it's absolutely backwards yep. i feel that these workers are what is if you ask them what their job is their job is to serve the customer their job is not to serve the manager the manager is there actually working for the worker so, yeah. so it's a reversed you know it's it, it's there's you know uh, right. Subordinates in the in the hierarchy of things, but in terms of the of an actual like no kidding efficiency of of, of, of an office or of a team, the, the the leader the manager is there. What, what what are they doing? There's three things, and I used to whenever I had a new manager, or at least in the last few years when I actually had the confidence to do it, I would actually tell them. Here's what my expectations are for you as my manager. Yeah. That was received in a few different ways, but it usually, <laughs> you know, whatever. But the first one is, is A, the, the leader, the manager is there to communicate up on right. their behalf. So what does that mean? That means that they defend them. They prevent, you know, they're, they're, they're basically, they, they express the, the needs and, the, and the, what, what all the team or each individual in the team needs to get the job done. But also what they need to get a to, to go where they want in their career. What is their goal? And if you don't know their goal as a leader, then you are you are failing <laughs> right. uh, because you need to be up there at the at the upper echelons, uh, fighting for your 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 team. Yeah. Second thing is is you communicate down. And so what does that mean? That means you are you are throwing mad defense. You are in your interference for the baloney that's coming down the hill. That's number one. You make sure the team understands the, guy, the, the, the directives from on high. So if this is being said up here at the executive level, it needs to be communicated and interpreted by that leader to his people effectively. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same message, and it doesn't have to be the same message to each person, yeah. but it has to be the effective message that they actually that they can trust, they're, that, that they trust you to, to, that they're getting what they need to get in order to get the mission done. Right. And the third thing, you have to try every day, all day, always to get them better tools to do their job. And that's it. Right. That's all I ask. And one of the last ones I had failed on all three, right? <laughs> and, 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 and as that leader, so, so if you look at that, he's, or he or she is working for the employee. It's not the other way around. Right. The, there's a respect thing, sure, subordinates to superiors, but the, the job of that superior, the job of that leader, is to ensure that those employees have everything they need, including security, to do their job, because they're serving the customer, whoever the customer is. Right. And if the customer's unhappy, everyone's unhappy. So, and that's, that's just the name of the game, and that's, I've seen it, uh, I came up with that over years, right? Yeah. And, and so I've seen it and it, it, it works great when, when it, it's a trust thing, right? And, and if you walk into that office and you get all 1970s, 80s and you're new and it's your way or the highway and you don't listen and you sit there playing solitaire the whole day while everyone else is, <laughs> which I've had, um, it doesn't do anything, that does nothing. And you're gonna, it's, it's it, at the, at, we're at, I guess best it'll be least efficient. At worst, you fail completely. Right. So, right. How about you? 
<laughs> you kind of took that conversation. No, over. I was telling you my one, but I want to <laughs> no, hear yours. You're good. You're good. Um, I walk in with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I also think that a leader should um, ha should lead by example. So um, if you're mm -hmm. if you as a leader are not willing to step up and do the whatever it is, mm -hmm. then um, you shouldn't expect the people that you're yeah. Uh, overseeing or whatever you want to say um, to do that. I learned that at Stop and Shop. Yeah. When I became a ACDH assistant cash department head. Whoa. At 16, right? Yeah. I was just tall. They thought I was like 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody told me that and I was like, okay. And I, it was never, never ask anyone to do something that you would not be willing to do yourself. Right. And, right. and I internalized that and I actually ended up cleaning bathrooms at Stop and Shop as an ACDH to exercise. I'm like, well, I guess I gotta. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm doing it. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yep. I have high expectations for leaders. I just wish I could do it better, you know? Right. But, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to um, to step up and. Well, yeah. If you if you begin if you form a relationship, which you will, with your people, um, it takes a very very uh, I don't know if it's strong leader or whatever. It takes a certain person or a certain fortitude to become friends with that person and also become a man, uh, an effective leader. Right. Right. Because there's right. there's I've I've had leaders. One of my last leaders that I worked for, I love the guy to death. I would have, I, before I even worked for him, I would have jumped off a bridge if he had told me that's what was best. I don't know how to get that, that, that special sauce. I don't like, sauce. I don't, I can't like put like my finger on exactly why it is that we wanted, everyone wants to, to do right. what he says. Yeah. And I, it, it just boils down to because the reason I do what he asked, because if I, if I disappoint him, that feeling is so terrible that he's not going to make me feel terrible. Yeah. It's self-internalized that I disappointed that guy, yeah. and that is not acceptable. So I'm going to yeah. move heaven and earth, and, and I'm going to get it done. And I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. You know, I don't know. I mean, he yeah. wasn't. I he wasn't perfect. No one's going to be perfect. Well, I don't he think that people, every leader yeah. can um, can be in that spot either. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think every leader is the kind that you're going to jump off the bridge for. Sure. You know? So. Um, but I describe it as somebody, a good leader is somebody who can compel a team of people to all push in the same direction for right. the same goal and, and do so because failure is simply not an option. And, and, right. and why that failure is not an option, it's that magic juice that they have or something else. I have to go with something else, so let's call it bonuses. <laughs> I don't know. I it's, I wish I could do. It. I've watched them. You know. Yeah. Uh, I read the books. Stanley McChrystal. Absolutely love that book. Mm -hmm. And it was. I'm like, man, I want to be like this guy. Had he been where I was leading, number one, he would have fired me, and <laughs> he would have fired everyone you know who needed to be fired that I should have been firing. So, yeah. Um, but I always had it in my head that if I kick someone off my team or if I fire somebody, that means I failed them, and. That goes up to a certain extent. I, that's what I learned, right? Yeah. Um, you have to be able to pull yourself out of that situation and really take a objective view as to what's going on, what the history has been, and whether or not you're doing right by the mission or right by the rest of the team. Yeah. Because when you keep somebody on who doesn't deserve to be on, you're impacting the customer, the team dynamic, the whole organization, everything gets impacted all because I was selfish. Right. So right, right. it's you know you'll don't don't sit there and me, me, yourself. Right. You learn and move on, and that's that's it. That's all I can do. Right. So and tell stories and do YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Boof? It's my dog. Huh, so what else? Describe one of your best leaders that you remember. Katie's always had an issue with Miranda. She grew up in a what we call a union family. <laughs> no, I love unions. I do. I love oh, unions. yeah. It's just the um, people that they battle are the other side, and that's the management. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, she got it baked in. That's what she's got. Um. You've always had adversarial relationships. Always. Every single one. Even the one that you really liked at the end and then ended up flipping and, and it turned into adversarial. Remember? It starts with B. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Katie doesn't want to talk about it. I don't like to talk about the people that I've worked for because um, many of them were just not, um, they were out for themselves and mm -hmm. they were um, very trying to either get something for themselves or get something for their career or to not make themselves look bad or whatever that case may be. Um, it wasn't, it was definitely not in the good for all of the people. Mm -hmm. Um, and that always, always, always upsets me because I for, yeah. am all about the good for all of the people. Very rarely in the long term does this guy's best career move actually, you know, sort of, um, I don't know, matriculate through the process as good for the company and everybody else. Yeah. And that's, you know. And another, but just... another thing too, I I um I get, and this may be a little bit different than the than the leader thing is um is I also get really frustrated because I see so many places that I've worked um, are not at all uh, respecting the environment or even trying to respect mm -hmm. the environment. Um, and I get super frustrated about that. Well, not respecting the environment, I think, translates into not respecting people because it's right. the people who I live in the environment, agree. right? And right. so, one of our two mantras we have two mantras that we run our businesses by. Number one is, what is it? Do the best for everybody. No, no, no. It's do the right things oh, for, the, for right the right reasons. reasons. Yep. It's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's basically our core values all wrapped up into two little mantras. And there's so much you could peel out of it. Uh, but it makes sense to do the right things for the right reasons. Um, of course, there's some ambiguities there, right? Because one person's right reasons are, are not uh, another person's right reasons. A sociopath might see, well, getting everything for me and nobody else for any, and nothing else for no, anybody else is right for me. So that's a right reason. Yeah. So it takes some, uh, I guess, maturity or whatever to, to really flesh it out and make it work. Yeah. The second one is prioritize people over profits every single time always uh -huh. and that's that's what I think you're gonna get into is is the profits getting in the way you we've seen that over the last like I'd say 20 years it has gotten to a just a nasty point where profits are over people and that people means customers that means employees that means the community right. that means everybody um, and they're putting profits over it uh, if you have any time, look up Morton Friedman. He was the guy who triggered it back in the 70s with his uh, thesis on that said companies, the only thing public companies should be even focused on is getting their shareholders rich. Yeah. And that, that just basically gave yeah. everybody permission who's greedy to be more greedy. And that's, yeah. greed is good. Yeah, no, it's not. Right. But we're starting to see companies actually come out of the woodwork, small and large, yeah. which are bucking that trend right yeah and they're actually doing they're listening to the customers they're actually you know putting more investment in in, in processes and materials that aren't necessarily gonna strip mine away a state you know it, right it's, it's yep. so we're seeing it but it's just like anything it's, it's kind of slow but you I cheer them on if I see them I always send them in you know hey my name's Peter I wanted to say thank you <laughs> <laughs> because it means something yeah, I write because of her. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have orange hair, so I have a temper, and so she taught me early to write, write about it. Because I get mad at anything, you know, like yeah, he gets mad. Like a lot. about products, I get mad at at inanimate objects the most. If you design something, make it work. And she used to say, instead of throwing your phone against the wall, why don't you write <laughs> right? them in a letter? And I said, okay, and it actually has that's bare fruit for for us. Like over the years, it's yeah. crazy. People, yeah. Yeah, until email became popular, now, now you can't get anything. <laughs> yeah, kind of. The internet has probably but, made that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's my take on leadership. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Stanley McChrystal, read his book. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know where he is? He's up in uh, New Haven as a Yale professor now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't read the book. 
it is sitting, I didn't read it either. I have the hardcover book, but I don't read well. I get about 30 to 40% into a book, and then it never gets picked up again. And I have about seven of them sitting around the house. So I do the books on tape while whilst I'm doing other things like painting or sleeping. No, while I'm painting or doing something other uh, at the other house so I can actually listen to them. Yeah. It's very cool. My mom, can she reads ridiculously fast and I think she fakes it I don't think she reads anything <laughs> fakes she it. does it's like you can't read a book that Those fast speed readers yeah right well I only read I read one word uh, less so I've got the <laughs> I've got the dementia <laughs> uh, nothing more on your uh, union family growing up to leadership and no, management no I I just um I'm all about unions. I think that unions are, are a really, really great thing because because of their basic reason. I think that I think that as a collective, all of the people getting together for a reason is very, very good. Um, Often, it's the the counter to that is all the stuff we've been talking about, the greed. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. um, I I also feel that the way that the unions are set up a lot of times um, are are not necessarily in the best for the for the individuals of the union um, I do know unions that are fantastic mm -hmm. for the for all of the people uh, history, um, history has shown that they can actually just be so ineffective that they just the country co uh, company has to shut down right and that's not right. nobody wins so right. uh, the worst ones are the self licking ice cream cones and <laughs> you, you know they exist simply to keep themselves existing right right right. and uh and that's you know it is what it is there's always bad apples but i think for the most part it's it's right. mostly good if i was an employer that size like uh, i think southwest airlines mm -hmm. they were union free the only union free airline forever and man because they they treated their their employees awesome yeah and i don't think that that went away something dynamic happened i don't remember what it was but they ended up unionizing and i remember being disappointed i'm like oh Southwest, but they, the company still is. They you walk into the headquarters, and they have pictures drawn by their employees' kids up on the wall. But, but that that's where the difference in unions are that are good and 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 bad. Not all of them, but as a collective, mm -hmm. that's where the difference is. So when when a union is set up so that you are a member of the union before you start working at a place or a company or whatever. Um, that's when the union is good. When the union, is, when you get hired for the company, and then you have to join the union because you got hired mm. for the company, that's what I think that the union falls short because because now you like a closed shop, right? Yeah, is that what it's yeah, called? yeah, yeah. Um, so now what happens is the um, the company and the union have this little contract that is specific, usually to that location. Um, or a couple of locations, and and then it it becomes the the purpose of the union is then diluted because now um, now the company and the union are trying to get themselves, you know they're late, they're very much in bed with each mm -hmm. other, um, but but in the case of the plumbers and pipe fitters and the electricians right. and the um, there's a couple of other ones, but. In those cases, now you join the union, you go into an apprenticeship, mm -hmm. and you, you you belong to the union first, and then after that, right. you go and you get a job with the union. So the distinction in, is that they're labor unions versus the, I don't, I don't, they're probably all called the same, but in my brain, it's labor unions are the pipe fitters. So if you're a member of the la labor union, you go to them, and then they teach you everything you need to know and right. you progress and you start going to work for this company, then you go to this project and this project right. throughout your career but, versus but, a, a union where you are working for I whatever company, and like whatever, right. and you just happen to be get a job there and then like you said, you have to join it because they're there. Right. And what is, what is you know, are they showing any benefit? But there's very distinct, I, I differentiate both of those because right. there's a huge value here 
with the labor unions because it's where, con it's where if I'm going to build the building, now I have a place to go where I don't have to haggle for pricing on all my people. Right. And I know that I'm going to get the, the top tier talent. Right. Absolutely. And, 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 um, and then in that case, then the union is, is there's still some politics, mm -hmm. but the, the union in that case is then protecting all of the people for all of the good. And right. it's, it's, um, it's way better than, than, um, than, uh, uh, a situation where you get hired first. I think another issue there is if you have a company that is, this will sound familiar, uh, they have an overarching union contract, but they have outstations all over the place, which right. have their own unique cultures and own unique problems right. and own unique uh, cost of living. Right. Yet, you, the guy who's in the most expensive place over here with a horrible leadership and just bad, they're not giving them the tools, it's but everyone else is 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 you know there everyone else is fine under the certain agreement that they came up with mm -hmm. but he's not or they're not then how do you reconcile that right, right, right. and it's usually that they don't <laughs> that's the end yeah of it. it's not usually a good deal mm -hmm. for someone involved right but, yeah man leadership in unions who the thunk <laughs> Heck yeah. Next time. What are we going to talk about next time? I don't know. Maybe we could. We'll just figure it out. How about Buckaboo? You want yeah, to talk? Random. You're Buckaboo. She's, uh, her name, she is a Buckaboo. Not Her name is Savannah. She is a Buckaboo. That is her, her breed. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one. So yeah. she's pretty valuable. So if you liked this video, you can um, submit comments and suggestions for our subject for the next time. And remember, these are opinions. Don't like... Brah, your leadership thing is baloney. It could be baloney, but explain why. Right. It's, don't just go in and hate. You know, right. I'm I am open to the fact that I could be wrong. I want to hear it because I want to learn. But come on, don't be just nasty right. troll. Right. Go in there and say, well, I think it's wrong because uh, I think it's this, this, and this. And we can have a discussion. Imagine that. I'm gonna get you. God, look at her. <laughs> So that's all I ask. I like discussing there, things and, and, and debating. Um, as long as the discourse stays what are you doing there? respectful, you know? Yeah, we like to have conversations. Mm -hmm. And if you don't agree with us, we just we walk away and, and, and you can't say anything to us anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. What do you want? God, you're needy. Look at you. She's old, but she acts like she's six months because she's... <laughs> She's a buckaboo. That's what buckaboos do, isn't it? Yeah. You're so pretty. Where'd you get? Oh, you're so pretty. I bet your mom why, was... Why do you name... Why do you call her a buckaboo? Uh, Mid-Atlantic buckaboo. Yeah, but why? Why do you call her that? I don't know. Her name is Savannah. Yeah, oh, well, I said, Savannah's her name, and buckaboo is what she is. It's her breed. Okay, but she's a... but. Mid-Atlantic Mid buckaboo. Mid-Atlantic buckaboo doesn't exist. It sure does right here. And at the vet. Yes. We oh. brought her to the vet, and they actually, they, they laughed at me, which I'm fine with. I have orange hair. I've dealt with that. Uh -huh. And then they entered it into the computer, and so now it is codified. It is an official, uh -huh. I mean. But why did you originally come up with that name? Was there a reason? Yeah. What was it? Because you said that if. if oh, yes. <laughs> if if, if y'all can come up with these goofy butted, goofy ass, can I say goofy ass? Goofy ass. <laughs> breeds like labradoodle and, and whatever and else what is it um schnitzel <laughs> no, uh, what's the other one a puggle puggle <laughs> if you guys can come up with that well i'm coming up with one of my own and it doesn't it and it's it's a big dog i love little dogs but i love my big dog i need a wrestling dog that's why and she wrestles she wrestles with with all of her might so <laughs> But she's very gentle and has good bite inhibition. Yes. Yeah. Savannah, you want to say hi to your fans? <laughs> she bites at bugs. Don't bite at bees, dude. That'll hurt. Uh-oh. What are they saying, Savannah? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And Remember, I'm not her boyfriend. If you, you know, you got to... <laughs> You think she's high, you send that email. Yeah. <laughs> you do have to pass my 437 uh, point check, uh, background check. So okay. it's not that hard. Right. <laughs> okay. See ya. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
You can go stitch it. I guess so. 